Cultural Center. And Mr. Gilman, um, why are you here? Why am I here at this event today? Mm -hmm. Yes. We're celebrating the continuation of the extension of the USA Parkway, which is a critical asset element to the economic diversification of this part of the state. And uh, so we're now to the county line, Story County, Lyon County. Mm -hmm. We've come about 10 miles. We have about seven miles left to go. And so we've brought all the counties together and the state officials together, and everybody is looking at this infrastructure. And we're also getting the opportunity to share with them what's actually happening in this fabulous uh, employment center. And, uh, and a lot of folks didn't really uh, have the full story, so we're trying to get the word out about what it looks like, where we are, how, how dramatic the road is today, and how many jobs we're looking at creating soon. And uh, I have the question I have to ask uh, with regard to development, because uh, living in Nevada, kind of get a little sensitive to development issues in the sense that you know, people don't want certain things because they don't want it to tear up nature or other. Have you encountered any of that opposition in building this project? No, we really haven't, because we selected a site that is far removed from any of the residential uh, communities. And we did that deliberately. And then with Story County in the, uh, in the development contract that we put together, everyone agrees we may never build residential components here. This is strictly an industrial center and we're, we're 10 miles removed from any community. And uh, so therefore we haven't really had a great deal of opposition. And um, if I have to ask, I mean, how did this project come about? Like what made, you know, this made you decide one morning, hey, I want to build an industrial park. We were the developers of the Double Diamond Ranch South Meadows Business Park, 2,500 acres. We spent uh, the better part of the 90s putting that in. And uh, when finished, or about finished, we needed to take the next step. We had learned uh, in selling out South Meadows that there was a shortage of industrial property in the Truckee Meadows, totally. They just don't have much today anywhere. As a matter of fact, there's more property here in this project than there is in all other industrial projects combined in the part of the state. So it's a huge undertaking, and we knew that there was a demand for it and a demand coming. We also knew that gaming was starting to erode a bit, the gaming jobs were starting to erode, and therefore we were going to see an economy that really needed some economic diversification. And uh, so those, uh, all of those issues coming together for us led us to an understanding that there needed to be a piece of land. And we found this lovely ranch out here called the Azamara Ranch, 104,000 acres, with, with all of the infrastructure already here. The power companies were here generating power, and the gas lines were already in, and the railroad is here, and I-80 was here, and so it was a dream come true. We found all this land about halfway between Fernley and Reno, not going to make anybody mad because we're developing it, and had all the infrastructure already here. It was a, it was a no-brainer, they say. And, um so we've now, you know, you've built this, it's now moving, we're um, standing at the end of, you know, the paved part of this. How many years or how long will it take to get from this end to the other end and, and then some? That's an interesting question and of course it requires a crystal ball. And uh, so one of the things that I can tell you is a bit of a story is when we started South Meadows, mm -hmm. South Meadows Double Diamond Ranch, if you're familiar with that project, the, the studies then from the university and from, from the various uh, uh, folks that do economic development studies, they felt that that would be a 25-year development based upon the rate of absorption in the community at the time. Well, we sold that out to the bare walls in nine years, not 25. And, and one of the reasons is that the project itself was attractive to the people that you wanted to come by in it. And so they saw where they wanted to be, they saw what they needed. We've done something similar out here at TRI. TRI is an industrial center, rail served, highway served, heavy industry. And it's done at a price and with all the utilities that everybody can afford. And we knew we didn't have any competition in the area. So when companies are coming, uh, they're gonna come here and look, we get a first look at it. I can tell you that 10 years ago, if you were to arrive here and you'd want 50 acres to build on, there were only three or four properties you could look at. Today out here, as you sat through the presentation, we're signing contracts for 2,000 acres at a time, 100 acres at a time. Uh, 50 acres is a small transaction here. So I guess my question back would be, with that kind of absorption taking place, it's going to shorten the timeline that otherwise we might consider practical. I can't really answer the question. It's too big a property. Certainly won't do it in my lifetime. But we've already done 12 million feet under roof, 5,000 employees, and opened up three phases of 5,000 acres each. So it's on the move and quickly. And um, 
my, la my, my, my last, qu well, second to last question is here. Now, I'm a university student, and uh, we're obviously kind of having a tough go ahead trying to get in the job market. Sure. I think the, the numbers quoted from a uh, source, but about 19% uh, of college students feel they can find a job yes. in this market. Yeah. Um, how long will it take for you know guys that gra just graduating at UNR next you know, next uh, next year or next semester or in the, you know next five years to see some of the fruits of this labor? The jobs are here in this park today. Perhaps not the job they're looking for, but the job is here. Manufacturing is coming in rapidly. I just closed escrow with Fulcrum Bio, which is uh, uh, taking uh, a trash and turning it into methane gases and different uh, components for industry. So we're seeing those kinds of companies built. It normally takes, from the day I sell a piece of land, it takes about 24 months for the company to be open. So let's say you and I can say from, from today, where we are standing here chatting, in 24 months I'm going to have a lot of new jobs out here. And, and we never want to lose sight as, as a community, as a nation. The jobs are what keep all of us growing and happy, having the quality of life we're looking for. And, and when too much focus is put on stopping industry or interfering with growth and development, as we first started talking about when we started this interview, the more you interfere with it, you're actually hurting your own community because there won't be the new jobs. Industry can't be healthy. And a healthy industry is the bottom line to to contentment of life in America. And well, like, this will be second, second, the last question, because uh, that actually leads me to another question. Leads me to another question about what kind of companies and what kind of um, businesses will be coming here. And I heard there was a solar company coming in. Um, that you've got a solar plant coming in. Um, I guess uh, a uh, what's it called? I can't remember what they call those businesses. Um, a company turning basically trash and methane. What can, I mean, will you be try, are you trying to attract energy as well as you know manufacturing and other companies? Absolutely. Uh, when you have 5,000 acres to absorb an all pre-approved heavy industry. Mm -hmm. You can do everything known on the globe and all uses in this park are pre-approved. So you're going to see manufacturing. We have, for example, uh, Duraflex is here. They build diving boards. They, they're the leaders of diving boards for schools and, and, and the Olympics. Uh, and then you can go up to PPG, Pittsburgh Paint Company. They have the Olympic Stain Division. And then you go over to Hardy Building Products and they're building the building siding and all of the backer board for construction jobs or, or uh, Royal Sierra Extrusions, who do all the windows that go into all the houses in the pre. So there's a lot of construction here, and then there's a lot of interesting things like diving boards, or, or uh, there was even the company here that, uh, that does the, uh, the ceramic coatings for the space shuttle, and also the coatings on the $20 bills for counterfeit uh, enhancement. So uh, a lot of businesses, a lot of growth, a lot of manufacturing, and that's gonna equal jobs for, for educated students. Oh. And then my last question, is there anything you just want to say that I did not cover or we didn't cover in this interview? Well, you and I could spend an hour or two together and cover things. So I, what I'm going to tell you is thank you for being here, thank you for taking the time, and I'd be glad to sit down with you anytime. Hey, no problem, sir, and uh, thanks for doing this interview. My pleasure.